eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. When you save on auto insurance for driving safe with USAA SafePilot, you'll feel like a big deal. Even in a traffic jam. Save up to 30% with USAA SafePilot. Restrictions apply. The Go-Go's were on the radio until I called you. We got the beat. I mean, I, who's got the tomato? Who's got the carrot? Wow. That, that's what I want just, to know. You're just, you're just coming right out of the gate with vegetable jokes. Okay. Well, yeah. Let us entertain you. And now, Cheese Wits. Chris Roth, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank what, you very much. What's happening? None. What's Love happening with you? Uh, nothing, nothing. Yeah, the Go-Go's were on the radio until I called you. We got the beat. I mean, I. who's got the tomato? <laughs> who's got the carrot? Wow. That, that's what I want just, to know. You're just, you're just coming right out of the gate with vegetable jokes. Okay. Well, yeah. Let us entertain you. Oh, wow. Where's your friend Wally today? I don't know. You should probably call him. There he is. Well, Chris, Chris just left the call. Nice job. You think that was my fault? I guess. Oh, Every, Lord. Everything was fine. He was making vegetable puns. Tune mm-hmm. into the show next week to hear him. You know, the vegetable puns? Uh-huh. Look at it. Every week now you have a new hair thing going on. And really? Your, this is just. What did your shirt say? Mary Pitbulls? Mary Pitmas. Oh, Mary Pitmas. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at you. You got the workout shirt, like cut off the collar, all tough. It's not a workout shirt. It's just a sweatshirt, but I cut the hood off because it restricts me. It's... I don't like being restricted in any way. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure I remember that. <laughs> Where did Chris go? Is he coming back? What happened? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I, I'm I'm ready now. I wish my shit was working correctly. Yeah, you're kind of quiet again. But then when you when you were louder, I heard me feeding back through your. Oh, I yeah, I turned up the um, speaker for a second. What, what happened to Chris? Did he get angry already? I can't imagine that he was angry at your sound problems. No, there's no way. But I texted, where did you go? And he has not responded. He must be dead zoning it again. Should I message Jenna again? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. <laughs> I, I think not. She I, wants I, to meet us. Yeah, I'm not sure she's loving us, though. Why not? I don't know. We say no, no bad things about her. Unlike no. some people she's engaged to. <laughs> right. Are you in full Christmas mode? I mean, as much as I'm going to be, I got all my gifts wrapped today and I have to go to the post office tomorrow. I'm going to wrap my sister's stuff so I can send it to her uh, her place in Pennsylvania. They're all, all set to go. So, yeah, but, but, you know, nothing says Christmas in the South like having to turn on the air conditioner while waiting for a tornado warning. Really? Last it's night. From there? Yeah. It was about 30 miles north of here. Wow. Well, there was there was tornadoes that hit about 30 miles north, and then I think about 60 miles north. Destroyed we're Clarksville. We're expecting screwy, screwy, screwy weather, too. So we had... Yeah, it um, comes from here to there. Six or seven inches of snow we had, um, and it's been snow covered, and I got my snow tires on yesterday. And then uh, yesterday when it was 47 degrees and today when it's uh, in the 40s again and we're expecting um, two inches of rain and 50 mile an hour winds. Yeah. So you're getting the storm that just came through here. It was it was in the 60s or maybe 70 yesterday. Right. And last night I realized it was uncomfortably warm in the house and I had to turn the air on and then all of a sudden it was there's chris hi what happened um so 
apparently call waiting doesn't like this thing and the other call just decided to take through and i'm sitting there saying yeah you know wally we um and they're like who's wally i'm like wayne (laughs) (laughs) and he's like yeah who do you think it was i said i was just in the middle of a fucking podcast now i'm talking to you (laughs) he says all right we'll only keep you for a minute i'm like no you don't think you know how this works (laughs) okay but all right but um, i'm back all but right. yeah, so it was, it was, it was, I turned on the air conditioning and then, um, I, all of a sudden it was, it was pouring. It was raining so hard. I had to turn, like, I couldn't hear the TV. And then, uh, I started looking online to see what was going on. And as it turns out, what was going on was tornadoes. I was going to ask about the tornadoes. I'm glad Wally, uh, I didn't really miss anything. Cause that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Now it was about 30 miles. The closest one was about 30 miles North. And then, uh, Clarksville is probably 50 or 60 miles away. Yeah, that's super nuts. Clarksville wow. got destroyed. Wow. Yeah. This is the wrong season for tornadoes. We get them in the fall and the spring usually. I'll tell you what. The Bible Belt in this country gets hit with worse weather from God than anybody. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> Praying to God does no good in the Bible Belt. Well, the Westboro Baptist Church says that's because God hates gay people. So, well, that, that, that's why they get shootings and bad weather mm-hmm. and all the God saying, yeah, 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 it's the gays. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of them. Meanwhile, he's killing everybody but the gays. Right. <laughs> so it's not working out for those praying folks. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, what's your, uh, are, are, are you in the spirit yet? You didn't seem very much in the Christmas spirit. Are you there yet? Who's calling? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I really couldn't give a rusty fuck this year. Why? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know. A lot of shit going on. Yeah. Same here. Family drama. Oh, yeah. family drama here too. Courts and kids and parents and yuck. Mm-hmm. It is all a big shit show right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not happy. Yeah. It's, uh, so is Wally's microphone weird? Because I hear a bunch of scratching. Is it weird? I don't hear scratching. That's weird. I just like, hear... Like scratching like I'm an 80s DJ? Yeah, I'm just hearing a weird noise. <laughs> Yeah, see, I feel like there's something wrong with what's going on with my microphone as well. Yeah, you're still not as as your volume. Yeah, turn turn off your mic real quick, Wally. Is that better? And it all went away. No, all all of Wally's noise went away. Yeah, Wally's got a lot of noise on his line. That's weird because I can't hear it at all. You can't hear that. No. What's going on is my mic. And now it's back. There we go. That, okay. There you are. There you go, Wally. There you we go. Right. Now you sound normal, you fuck. Yeah. I, I was I was telling you, I was not sounding right. Are you yeah. are you seeing the, the levels now? Yeah, now I've got VU. So as opposed to BO, I've got VU. You replaced your mic cable before, right? Yeah. So that's Brand not new. it. And now but, Wally went PU. <laughs> Let me just adjust the volume of my speaker now. So we had this uh, this fun meeting last this past week um, at work. Your company company meeting All about right. our new our benefits. We're changing providers for our insurance and everything again. That really sucks. And whenever we do this, our our HR manager sends out an email about the exciting changes we're about to have, and they're generally not all that exciting they never are but the, <laughs> but exciting. one of the things so so basically the whole meeting is a guy who is the representative from the new provider who's like and this is your this p- plan and this is this plan and here's what you get and so he's going through the the pharmacy section of the benefits and he says and this uh, this says quantity limits and quantity limits is basically the insurance company looking out for us to make sure we don't become dependent on these medications. It was a good thing I had my my microphone muted because I went, oh, fuck off. Well, you got no sound. 
It's because you why know why? I was sitting there. That was no, funny. I, I I have no I had no sound because I had uh, I hit the talk button so I could blow my nose oh. and then I didn't blow oh. my nose. <laughs> okay. Nobody wants to hear my snots flying. Nope. Well, well, some people might, but nobody on the podcast. Mm-mm, no. No. There he there he goes again. Is he is he blowing again? He's yes, blowing. I'm blowing my nose. Yeah. Good mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm all set. All right. Well, good. Glad to have you back. It's I was drinking, just- drinking hot tea. So, so I am. Even though there's a there's the the shitstorm of bullshit here. Uh, by the way, uh, were you flagged for any medications? Jess, we, we need to have you speak to somebody. You're taking- no, but there is one medication that I get that I, I think I've talked about this before. I'm not allowed to to fill it until exactly 30 days have yeah. passed. I'm on the same med- same type. Pre-gabble. But then the, the pharmacy doesn't keep it in stock because it's expensive. And even though I have an active prescription, they wait to order it until I do the refill, but I can't request the refill until it's been 30 days, which means I always have to go three or four days without it. Yep. Same here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a, the, 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 the same deal. And you wonder why we're all fucked up. Yeah. yeah. But thank God the insurance company's here looking out for me to make sure I don't become dependent. Well, On a the, medication, the, by the way, that has no dependency. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. You, you got to gotta be careful. You mm-hmm. might be get, getting up there. Not- Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. No, I was saying Jess is up there posting on Facebook. She's going to an opium den and she wonders why her fucking insurance <laughs> is denying you shit. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, I thought my I thought my settings were private, so United Healthcare couldn't see. She's got herself leaned back with, with the the opium straw in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like she's in the movie a little what what a little China, whatever it's called. I mean, it is exciting news that we are moving away from United Healthcare. I don't know if the new company. I will hated be any, those fuckers. Yeah, I hate them so much. I don't know if the new one will be any better because it's still an insurance company and. They're all fucking trash, but we'll see. Well, I have United Healthcare. Are they trash for you? Because they're trash for me. No, they're they're fantastic. Ugh. But the 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 um, I I think it may be the difference in the size of company. So my United Healthcare comes through Citibank, which you know it's it's. I mean, as far as I know, United Healthcare is United Healthcare, and every time my yeah. doctor says she needs this medication, United Healthcare goes, mm, "Does she though?" Yeah, well, I've, there's I've these never... big little plans all throughout. I mean, just because it's United Healthcare doesn't mean if you look at your group and your bin and all that shit, right. you know, if you're not in the right plan, I mean, it's one of them things. Like I had Blue Cross Blue Shield with. Uh, T.O.P. Mm-hmm. And everything was great. And now I've got Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama with a smaller company. And I need to take out a mortgage to have a fucking copay. Right. Mm. Yeah. So so, so the, there's it, it's. Uh, well, Jess, I, I'm, I'm going to have to just say this. It's white male privilege that I have. I believe that to be United true. Elk. <laughs> I believe that to be true. Well, hey, I, I I'm a white male, privilege. you fuck. So so you might well, be enjoy a, your you know, privilege. Whatever you. your cell is, your your United Healthcare cell. So this one, so, so the one with with whoever I work for, and I don't know how this is how this fucking works, but I think Chris is on to it. You know, they, they they're they're insuring ninety thousand or a hundred thousand people in that one plan through mm-hmm. Citibank. You know, so they might not want to lose a hundred thousand people, and your company might say, "Yeah, it's." 37 people who the fuck cares or yeah. whatever it is yeah you know that's uh, true give them that bottom there and if they, they well, question we keep everything. joining these these organizations that that administer our insurance so that it puts us into bigger groups so that we can get better discounts or whatever but it doesn't right. seem to affect the coverage so we'll see well, maybe, we're switching maybe to you ought to change up go, go get that go get that uh that jesus christ insurance metashare Oh, you heard that about that one? It is bullshit. What, Isn't that something? What, you share the costs of your medical oh, yeah. procedures so with you're not everyone. Aware of MediShare, Jess? No. So MediShare, as Chris is explaining, is is basically a a a, a group of people get together all through, and and we're on God's side through a God plan. It, it's all religious sort of organizations yeah. <laughs> that yeah. together. But here's the thing: it's not really insurance. No, it's not governed by anybody. They can choose not to cover any fucking thing they want. Uh huh. 
Wow. So you pay in your money and it's, and it's, so everybody puts, pools their money, you know, so if it was the four of us, we'd all pool our money and the three of us, we'd all pool our money in. And the three of us would have, I don't know, somebody making decisions. Right. Yeah. Fuck Chris. We're not going to cover his shit. Well, that's basically it. Or if we do cover it, you know, it's going to be one of those things. Our premiums will go up or whatever they yes. call it. There, there are gifts will go up so we can cover Wally's hysterectomy. Right. So we've got to you know, right. make sure that we're paying the same amount of money. Yeah. I'm sorry, Wally. I'm going to need you to keep your uterus. I'm not paying for that shit. <laughs> I'm no. sorry. Well, how about if I just give up the fallopian tubes, but I keep the uterus? Will that work for you? I mean, you? how much is that going to cost us? Hey, your body, your choice. <laughs> <laughs> but th- th- it's not just healthcare. They, they, there's a couple of those um, religious quasi loan. It sounds like an HOA for your body. <laughs> it it is exactly it, that, Jess. It kind of is. Hey, do they Jess, get to, so do they get case, to fine it, you if you get a tattoo they don't like? Uh, basically, no Christmas lights on your pussy, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you go in to see the gynecologist and like, what is this? Is that a swastika on your vulva? I'm sorry, but we can't cover you anymore. Yeah. Hmm. You no, know, no, yeah, that that yeah. So those things I you know, I meant to talk about that a, a, a few times, Chris. I'm glad you brought that up. It is fucking evil. It really is evil. Again, it's so people advantage. people choose to they choose to buy into this. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you know, Jess, it's so culty, right? Yeah. It's so cultish. It, it, it's 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 paramount to any it's just cultish. They they brainwash people to thinking of we can take care of you better than the insurance company. They can't because they really do not have to take care of anything. There's no state government laws governing what they do and you can scream and cry all you want. So you can bet your ass they do not cover feminine, uh, you know, abortions or, or um, the pill or the, the only um, sexual medication they probably cover is the same as the blue pill. Because for some reason, they only want men fucking that that's it, which which is interesting because then if only men are fucking. Ah, guess who they're fucking. (laughs) Oh, dear. They're fucking other men. Here we go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. See, it's 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 a it's it's such a good point. Mm -hmm. It's an extreme. Hey, so I've been, you know, I've I've bashed a Hobby Lobby quite a few times. Mm-hmm. So I I have a um a friend. And he used to work for my wife, and he's now a manager at the Hobby Lobby. And uh, he he's a great guy. Works his ass off. He's a good human being. I'm considering applying for a job there. And I am, yeah. I see you twist your head, Jess, because I am at sort of Hobby feeling- Lobby. Yeah, I am feeling um, kind of uh, I'm I'm torn a little bit about it, about thinking about even doing that, but they're paying like fucking twenty two dollars an hour. Hey, you get Sundays off, Wally. You, you well, not man managers. Even though the doors are closed, oh, they're the in there working. Open. Ah, okay. Yeah, they 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 are oftentimes told you have to work if you like your job. You know, because this is this so- is funny. This is not Wally's leftist bullshit. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm morally torn over this. I'm sort of wondering if we're being set up for a punchline here. No, there is no punchline. I, I I am morally torn about this because, you know, the gig work I do, it eats up a lot of fucking miles. Yeah. And I'm not, so now I'm weighing, would it be better just to be in the same fucking place, a short run from my home? I mean, does it have less, to be Hobby Lobby? Because there are other stores. Money. That pay good money. Yeah, there are, but I, I, I like the idea of what that kind of work is. It, it, it's it's generally speaking, the people who shop at Hobby Lobby, generally speaking, are not assholes. Do they you not tend have to be. Michaels? What's that? So, do you not have Michaels? 
No, there's no no Michaels. Uh, we don't have a Michaels here. Really? It, it, it not in not in this. You have to go to Portland to find a Michaels. There was, uh, I think, there was a Michaels here, but it shut down. Hmm. Um, yeah, no, there's not a Michaels here. The 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 Hobby Lobby. J- just generally speaking, it's hobby people. Well, uh, here's the thing, Wally. I will allow it. Oh. Under the condition that you have a rainbow on you somewhere every day that you go to work. <laughs> yeah. They, they don't. Well, I can tell you that the, the guy who's the manager, he's not a guy who says, you can't be wearing rainbow. He doesn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And what, what, as a matter of fact, if you want, I'll send you a shirt just like mine that has a rainbow on it. And it says Ally AF. You can wear that. Yeah, they, they, they might say you can't wear certain stuff. Yeah. But the rainbow is probably, you know, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. It's not not fine. As far as I know. Anyway, he was telling me yesterday, because I was in there yesterday doing some shopping for some stocking stuff or things. And he said, I hire five people a week. And by the end of the week, by Thursday, they've all quit. Why? He said, he, he said it's almost impossible to schedule people three days in a row. They don't want to do the work. He said they just, they, they just the new breed of employee. Wait, did you just interested. say you were shopping at Hobby Lobby? Yeah, I went into shop. Hmm. <laughs> I know. Hmm. My wife and I were, because, oh, okay. listen, hmm. it, she does cross stitching and no other place has the cross stitch stuff she needs except there. So, you know, I get, if my wife was fertile and didn't already have the hysterectomy, <laughs> maybe I'd reconsider that situation. But you she's know, not fertile. So it's not a consideration anymore on our end. We are. Uh... I'm I'm concerned. I'm thinking that at some point soon, Jess, mm-hmm. Wally's probably going to have to shave his pussy hair. <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, it's you're not going to be able to wear the Birkenstocks into a Hobby if, Lobby, Wally. If you see me get a pompadour and start, you know, talking with like a little bit of a Southern accent, like maybe a Virginia accent, mm-hmm. rescue me. Rescue me We're because have I've gone to. over to the other side. But I am morally opposed to going that far up north in the winter. So I can't rescue you until at least August. Wow. Wally is. <laughs> and then there's Wally a three-day Holly window. Lobby. Mm. <laughs> there's only a three-day window in August. That's right. That's right. O- only thing I can say, Wally, is bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cruel. You're <laughs> such a rotten bitch. I am. <laughs> I am. That's me. Chris Cuntstein Roth. That's me. (laughs) So so here's something interesting I've been seeing. I see this every Christmas. And when you go into the the Walmart or any of the the stores that are like Walmart, even uh, Target or I don't know. Do you guys have big lots there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big lots. They have that aisle that's. For the people, that's the pre-made boxes of uh, hot cocoa, hot sauces, hot cocoa. It's those pre-made boxes that people buy the people that they have to buy a gift for, but they have no fucking oh, idea. Oh, the little gift sets. Yeah, yeah, those fucking gift sets that, that are, hey, here's some spoons with chocolate on them that you can put in hot water and have a chocolate milk. Yahoo! Here's some small little fucking hard marshmallows. Mm-hmm. I am so amazed. And when I watch people who have no idea what to buy their kids or their spouses, you can hear, they, they fucking just talk. You hear them talking. Like, how do you fucking not know what to buy a woman you've lived with or a man you've lived with for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? How do you not know? What, what is the struggle here? Yeah. They don't know. And fucking men are terrible at this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Men are fucking. Just ask not- anybody in any Walgreens on December twenty fourth of any year. Oh, or okay. Th- th- you remember th- I did that. I don't, but I'm like I know. I think every man I know has done that. Jess, mm-hmm. winter of mm-hmm. winter of two thousand eleven. You said to me, "Hey, what do you what are you getting Jennifer for Christmas?" I said, "I don't know. I'm stopping at Walgreens on the way home." <laughs> That mm-hmm. means that means whatever's left on the shelf in perfume, uh-huh. a uh, some sort of fake f- rose bouquet, one of those little uh, foot massage, foot bath things. Oh yeah, foot bath. Oh, I'm I'm pretty bath sure bath. that year she got one of those three pound Hershey bars 
and a universal remote control. It's I'm pretty a, it's sure that's shocking what it was. that that relationship didn't work out. It is <laughs> very shocking. shocking. <laughs> You're right. You know, I am the quintessential gift giver. For me, I, I am so thoughtful about the gifts I give. I, it real. I, I like being a good gift giver. Chris, what's Jenna getting this year? Probably a three-pound Reese's cup and uh, <laughs> universal remote control. <laughs> That's my, my guess. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe I'll take a trip over to Grove Hill and grab some of Bob's Christmas cash for kids and bring it home. We'll there stay. you go. Hey, there's <laughs> yeah. a hallway full of toys, if I remember correctly. So uh -huh. maybe That's she gets it. a new Barbie this year. So Chris is good. the same guy. Chris is the same guy, and he, he and, and 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 is the, uh, the guys like they're the same guy stopping at the Seven Eleven on Valentine's Day to grab the fake rose and and, a, and a, some sort of chocolate something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or or the anniversary where they're you know and, and no card is involved if they've got a card at the flower florist shop in the grocery store you're getting that little card yep. you know that i guess it's okay right i i guess it's okay but look valentine's day was great around here last year we Went out. We had dinner the night before Valentine's Day. I got her a card. She said she wanted a cake. I, you know, got her a nice cake. And on top of the cake, it said "Happy Birthday, Nikisha." <laughs> <laughs> I but dated a guy. I dated a guy who used to get me, you know, cards for my birthday that said "Merry Christmas" in Spanish. Oh yeah, I uh, I, I used to get my daughter. I would get her um, like birthday cards that said. Or uh, um, congratulations on your coming nuptials, or yeah. or, or uh, I hope you recover soon. That must be a radio guy thing <laughs> for for your birthday. My daughter gets me vicious cards. Yeah, v vicious. She's vicious. If she can find something hateful, she finds it, and she will she will scour for it. And if I find something, I will buy something in October for my daughter's birthday card in March. If I find the perfect one, I go, oh, that's fine. that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can find one, you know, you know, it's it, it's it's your uh, congratulations or uh, I, I I'm glad Cy had his bris, <laughs> and she gets that. <laughs> it's just that's what I do. But I it, it is pitiful how pitiful these fucking people are. What is that? What the hell is that? Oh, is it Chris? You've did you just been send a this? cunt. <laughs> So Chris just sent us a picture of, I hope you I'm know that. I'm seeing it right now. I hope you know you, that, man. You've been a cunt. Santa knows you've been a cunt. Oh, that's fantastic. Chris, do you know that person? Chris. That is awesome. Did Chris disconnect himself? No, he's, he's still there. Maybe he's on oh, mute. I, oh, I'm sorry. I was I, I muted it by accident when I went to do that. that that's a guy at the bowling insane. alley. That's fantastic. And on Friday night, he was wearing a yellow shirt with a QR code on it, and you brought it up on your phone, and it starts spelling out "fuck you." <laughs> it was great. Ooh. By the way, oh, yeah. Chris, speaking of guys that you know who are cunts, there mm -hmm. is <laughs> there's a guy who's in one of the audiobook narrator groups that I'm in. And mm -hmm. I don't know him, but he worked at the stations up in that area. It says he's in Baltimore, and he's he's a mutual Facebook friend with you. His name is. Oh, I know. Do you is he a, is he a dick in real life? Because he is a dick on the internet. Um, Mark is an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a dick. Yeah. Mark, though, has got a beautiful set of pipes. I mean, this guy, he used to be on uh, um, the in-house voice guy on Channel 13 in Baltimore. Hmm. And it was just so, he had just that warm, you know, legal ID shit that he would do. Yeah. It would just be so funny to hear him, WJZ TV, Baltimore. But I mean, he was just beautiful voice. He's one of those guys that on the audiobook side, like the, this, these groups that I'm in are for audiobook narrators. And a lot of the guys who've been, who've been narrating audiobooks for, you know, decades and know what they're doing. Most of them advocate that you get some sort of acting coach to 
improve on what you're doing with your audiobooks. And he mm-hmm. intentionally goes in the, this group and makes a post about, oh, sure, I'm sure the guys do fine who have acting, but you don't need it. And don't let anybody discourage you otherwise. And a whole bunch of people were arguing with him. And uh, I didn't realize until all of this transpired that that he knew that you two might know each other, but I just said, do you believe that because you come from radio, you don't, you don't like, there's nothing that you can do to improve. Like there's nobody that you can learn from because that's really all these guys are doing is saying, if you want to get better at this craft, here's what you should do. And they have the experience. And I said, just like in radio, where I also come from, when you're air checked, you don't go to your the other docs and go, well, I won an award, so I guess I don't need to be air checked anymore. There's nothing else for me to learn. And he responded that he believed that PDs just air check you to let you know who the boss is. And I was like, oh, this is a guy who thinks he knows better than fucking everybody. And I saw your message, Chris. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> good. God, did I, I love really, being right. I did you know not really dislike him. Who? Ed. Oh, yeah? He got Ed in a bunch of trouble at uh, WPOC 20 years ago. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I just decided this is a guy who thinks he knows better than everybody else, and you can't tell him anything. And 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 it, as soon as I realized that, I was like, I am out of this discussion. Not doing it anymore. I mean, in reality, he's a nice enough guy. Yeah. In person, yeah, I mean, I saw him two or three weeks ago. So I'm not. I'm not surprised though that a, that a radio person, that that a career radio person, would have that sort of mentality. That they think that because it's not the same skill. It's it's absolutely not because I've been listening to some um, um, uh, books on whatever audio books. What, what audio books, yeah, uh-huh. books on tape is where I. Again, my age. Uh, yeah, uh, audio. I've been listening to some audio books. And I, I I was listening to some uh, short story stuff, Edgar Allan Poe, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, 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 going back and listening to some classics. And they were fucking horribly read. Yeah. And then I listened to something from my, one of the very first books I read when I was six years old was Trixie Belden. Trixie Belden was sort of like um, um, a, a Nancy Drew. Okay. Except, and so it was, a, it was a, whatever. The woman who read it was fucking awesome. Was absolutely fucking awesome. And she did four or five different voices, variations of her own voice yeah. for each character. And she was so fucking That's what good. I'm trying to learn to get better at. And so I, there, there's a, a narrator that I'm listening to right now on an audiobook a series. And first of all, the book is <clears throat> the book itself is really good. But then the narrator, I actually heard her on a different book and found this book or this series because I was like, what else has she narrated? I want to hear more of her because right. not only do I enjoy listening to her, she's somebody I can learn from. Yeah, and, well, and when I uh, hear these narrators doing those different voices, I try to do the voices that they do, and I can't do them like they do. But I'm, I'm in the early stages of this. I'm oh, still learning. I, I'm not a- any good at uh, what you're talking about, but I will say this: reading to children. When I was reading, to, when I was reading to my kids and to my grandkids, one of the prerequisites is to do the voices. Mm-hmm. Is to when you're reading certain shit, you 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 can't read to a kid who's you know four that the big bad monster sounds exactly like the hero in the story. Right. You've got to, you've got to change it up or else, it, it, because that's what gives them the impact of it. Right. Even mm-hmm. when you read Dr. <laughs> Seuss shit, you got to do stuff. So I understand I'm, I'm not good at it. I'm, I'm Papa good at it. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not audiobook good at it, but when I, with the, the, I've heard of several audiobooks and a couple, a couple of them, the, the readers are just fucking bad some of them oh. are and because they get work they like this guy because they get work they assume that they're just fine and there's nothing that they need to learn so my thinking on the audiobooks i've heard is that they were um early on books on tape that have just been recycled and now they they're might have been but books. also a lot of the before, best before the art form was per, was perfected but a lot of the best audiobook narrators are professional actors yeah. Oh, for, yeah. So I'm listening. I've just listened to I've been listening to the uh, John Stamos book. Mm-hmm. 
Does he read it himself? Yeah, he's so good. Yeah. He's so fucking good at, at his stuff. It just, just, he's reading his own book and he's just so good at it. Mm. And it's, it's, it's all acting. Yeah. And he, he knows where to inflect and, and how to inflect and, and where he just does it right. The other advantage is the other thing I sort of think I've, I've noticed is there's, they've got to read it in advance. Well, yeah. There's yeah. no way. That's the other big argument that happens in the, in the narrator forums is that, some people think, well, I'm not going to read it in advance because I want to be surprised along with the reader. And well, the people that have been doing it forever are like, it's not your job to be surprised with the no. with the reader. It's your job to perform the book. So that I'm surprised. Yeah. And I, and I can only get that through your read. <laughs> and I actually learned that the hard way before I ever saw that conversation because I, I read – I started a book and I didn't read through it. And it's like chapter 25 when I find out that it was set in Virginia and uh, I'm not doing any sort of Southern anything. No lilt, nothing. nothing. No <laughs> Because I didn't know. So yeah, I, lesson I, I, learned. I, I, so like everything in life, like every performing art, because it's a performing art, mm -hmm. it's art. Yeah. And it's performative. It's radio and acting and and audio books and uh, and fucking working at Disney. Mm -hmm. It's acting and it's performative and it's open to interpretation. And hopefully your interpretation works, mm -hmm. but it's still interpretive. So you have to do something. Yeah. You can't just fucking read it out. Yeah. It's like, well, you, you've gotten, and Chris, I'm sure you've gotten, you've gotten reads from voice guys or voice girls. I've used voice women and voice men that are fucking horrible. Yeah. Oh, they're ridiculous. They're, and it, it almost sounds like they're trying not to get the job sometimes too. Yeah. The best people always give you three, four, five versions of the same right. blurb. And Th that's one of the reasons why I always loved Dave Steele, the guy who does our, and uh, now, Cheese Wits. Cheese Wits. Because every time I ever sent him a promo, especially the funny ones, like every year at FRE, we did uh, a thing called Bras for the Cause, where we would collect bras and string them up at the sponsor's location at the end of the month. And for every bra we got, the sponsor would donate a dollar to the breast cancer wing of the local hospital. And so the the obviously the reason for the fundraiser was um, serious, but we always had fun with the promo. Thank you for right. your support. Like, I don't know. I, we, we would add a bunch of boob puns in there. And Dave always, always, always was able to read my promos and liners the way that I heard them in my head. Yeah. That's, always. We So when we at Kiss, we used J.J. McKay, who was fucking great at it. Yeah. He's like out of Texas. Dallas, right? Yeah, He's no, dead. out of Flower Mound, Texas. Yeah, it's Dallas. Was his, yeah. was his address address. But yeah, I think he had a Houston address. Um, and then another guy who was really fucking, a radio guy who was really good at it. Do you remember a guy, Mark Driscoll? Yeah. Oh, of course. That fucking, he had that voice. It was, it would fucking, it was like a laser. Mm -hmm. Another dead guy. Yeah, another dead guy. But when he, he, his fucking, and he didn't need processing. It didn't sound like on his voice. He would just. He could bend sheet metal with I that fucking voice. Maybe that's where the problem is, though, because you have to having the voice is only part of the equation. You have to oh, yeah. you have oh. to know how to use it appropriately for the job. And having the voice to do imaging is not the same as having the voice to do an on air radio shift is not the same as having a voice to narrate right. audiobooks. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's there guys, correct. Yeah. Was, I, I don't I wonder if did Scott Shannon ever do voice work? Um, yeah, on a couple stations he did. Because um, I, he's a guy I would think that probably wouldn't be great at voice work. No, but, but you'd hear him doing, you're in Philadelphia on Y100. <laughs> you know, he, he was, yeah. He what, became a parody. He, that, that, that's him becoming a parody of what the voice what? guy, of the well, old radio guy. Listen, the guy's, uh, once again, a nice guy who has yeah. become a parody of himself. Mm -hmm. Yes. He, he called me a few years ago. He wanted me to run that syndicated um, True Oldies channel 
on one of my stations, which ironically, the station that I still own, the broker just put that on. But nonetheless, he calls me and wants me to run it. And I pick up the phone and it's a 917 number. I knew he was calling. So I picked it up. I said, hello. Well, hello there. This is Michael Scott Shannon. I'm a radio DJ from New York City. How are you? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, Oh, I'm I'm great. How are you? I can't complain, not at all. So true oldies, my friend. <laughs> all right. I had a PD I worked for in Texas, the same station where the uh, owner slash GM was Satan. The that, devil? that yeah. station. Mm-hmm. And the PD, remember on some of the boards, um, especially the ones that had the slide pots, not the turn pots, where if you clicked it, you could click the mic down into Q and hear yourself through the Q speaker. Yeah, I was always fun, wasn't it? Yes. This guy, Bobby Bell, had the deep radio voice. Somebody told him you have a great voice for radio. And so if you, if you went into the studio to talk to him while he was on the air about anything, the whole time he talked to you, he would have the microphone pot in Q and he would talk to you through the microphone with his deep radio voice so that you could hear him through the Q speaker. What a fucking dork. <laughs> my, I, my, I have a little story about using the cue. Uh, so you used to use the cue when you would record phone calls, at least a, a station I worked at. You, you'd turn off the, the program button and you'd use the cue button, right, to yeah. record phone calls on the reel-to-reel. And I one time, I was playing, I fucking, I think I, I, think I was playing The Babies, Isn't It Time? And there's fucking parts of that song that are so sweet that are just uh, just just the big girls open up and just start singing right Mm -hmm. and um so i forgot i thought i was i forgot that the that i put the i'd done a break and then forgot to take the mic out of program and thought i was just in the queue (laughs) and i'm singing my ass off to that song on air with it like wally karaoke (laughs) and then i started getting some calls we want to hear the song. You sing okay, but we want to hear the song. Shut up. <laughs> like, what the f-? And I look and I go, oh, my God. Hey, Wally, who sings that song? You should uh, let yeah. them do it. Right. Yeah, just just <laughs> like, can you sing solo? Solo, we can't hear you. Yeah, I, 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 so I made a few I, I, I made a few mistakes doing that, mm. forgetting to. to I to think that's why they up. had, instead of it being a separate button, you just potted it all the way down to hear it yeah. in cue. Well, yeah. I, mean, I can't be the only one on this phone call that edited a phone call on the air. Oh, by all the time. Multiple times. You know, times. Right, right on top of the fucking song. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. When you're tra- and of course, what word are you cutting out? Him going, oh, fuck. Yeah. You right. Know, and that's what you're getting right over top of the music. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was because of that cue button because I would forget. Mm-hmm. And how, you'd forget. You'd have it go, I'm, oh, I can hear it fine. And you forgot. I forgot to take the last fucking call out of program. And I just, I potted it. You'd pot it down. And that's how it would work, right? You'd pot it down and then you'd pot it back up to listen to it thinking you'd only had it in queue, but you had it in program and queue. So it was going over the air at the same uh-huh. time. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's me. Because I was always taught that when you were done talking, pot down. hmm Always pot down. So just in case you left it on. But you know what? I was taught something totally different. When I was for, first started, somebody said, find your mic level and then just turn it on and off. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I always, because of making mistakes, I was taught, was taught to turn it down. Yeah, turn it yeah I think I was taught to leave it, to leave it at the right level. And then I realized that I was too prone to making that mistake. And so I would pot yeah. it down. Yeah. So I, I was too I, paranoid. I always, but habit was just you crazy. only let but, fuck get on the air once before you start doing things differently. But, but you know where your level is. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the cheat on that is you just put a piece of scotch tape. On the on the uh, across the slider, so that when you when you punch the pot back up, you hit the scotch tape. I've seen people mark it on the board in Sharpie. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, that too. But I I I used to, if it was a new board, I would put a piece of scotch tape and then I could just slam the thing up and it would it would hit it. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you're like all things. Your finger automatically goes to that spot, yeah. right? It does. It's like uh-huh. Learning how to type. It's like ASDF. It's like learning how to, your finger automatically, boom, boom, boom. It, it's automatic. 
there, and there's no gas. I was in the studio down at 107.3, which I realized this week was is my 25th anniversary for first time opening up the mic on that station. Wow. wow. And yeah, really. And you know, you, you're there, you're in this 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 beautiful room with you know nine cart decks and all that other shit floating around and you're so timid trying to get on the air because you know you've got a fucking program director that is so quick on that hotline okay and i think i told you one time i was trying to do a break and yeah. i played a song on saturday night it was a request because um we had just done the liner on the air it says hey make a request program director calls me drunk out of his mind what the fuck are you playing I said, it, it's um, The Hustle, Van McCoy. There's a disco show. And he said, what the fuck are you playing that for? So we just played the liner that said, call 1-800-727-1073 if you want to hear something. What? Don't fucking play that card again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, I, I never, I, I absolutely never called anybody while they were on the air, ever. Ever, 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 ever. And to be quite honest, I hardly ever listened to anybody else when they were on the air. Almost, almost never. I, th I think it's a fucking rotten thing to do. Mm. I, I, I think it's a rotten thing to do to, A, make, you know, to, for, for somebody. Again, because I do believe in the art form of what it is we did. Did. And I just fucking did not believe it was right to listen to them. Because their thing is different from my thing. I just want to make sure that when they deliver their thing, they deliver it correctly. Deliver your shit. Whatever your fucking shtick is, and I'm okay, go ahead. I'm just going to show you how to tighten it up or, or, or do, it, do it more uh, so it can be accepted easier. But I'm not going to tell you how to be whatever it is you are going to be. Just, just I not. I would use the hotline on jocks, but I would only call them and tell them, hey, man, great break. Good job. And that was it. And I would save the ass kicking for in, per in person, you know. Oh, fuck yeah. I, yeah, do that I, don't think I, I don't think I ever hotlined. I don't think I ever hotlined the jocks, but I did. You know, we talked. Like, oh, you hotlined me. <clears throat> no, I did not. <laughs> yes, you did. No, Chris, I might have, I might have air, walked into you? the studio. Do what? I might have walked into the studio. No, no, no. It was a Saturday. You hotline me. You oh, hotline me. What you the said, fuck were you doing? You, you said, what the fuck? Why are you playing The Devil Went Down to Georgia? You said, what the fuck are you playing? Oh, was that when Went Clear Devil Channel decided to change all our cart numbers? Uh-huh. And you thought I was fucking going rogue. <laughs> <laughs> going rogue. <laughs> yeah. Go, go and rogue, go and rogue in radio. Well, that doesn't. I, I know, Jess, you you played a couple rogues for us. Um, uh, I guess the, the the woman who went off um, a few months ago, um, the female jock who went off a few months ago, who was just like, well, fuck you guys. The one or, who said, I, I quit this bitch. Yeah. Her. Oh, Annette of the Mood Center. Yeah, yeah. I I, I have I have not ever really been part of anybody going rogue before mm. but i would fucking love it to tell you the truth i would fucking love it we went rogue on our last day chris oh well you we certainly fucking did i mean we didn't say i quit this bitch we didn't like jeopardize the fcc license well i mean maybe we did are you allowed to were legally, you having drinks are, are you allowed to legally drink wine on the air oh yeah we were we were drinking our gas station wine, but yeah. we, we, we said some monumental things on air that afternoon. Yeah. I wonder what the FCC would, would frown upon more, S saying, I quit this bitch, or drinking. I think they'd be more concerned with drinking. Maybe. I, maybe. I, I, you know, the, I don't think the Funny Communications Commission cares anymore. No, no not I, I anymore. It, it doesn't even yeah. exist anymore. Somewhere, I still have my my license that you, you're not even required to um, have anymore. I oh, wish it's right I here. still had my license. Look, it's right here. It's ripped up, but it's right here. Yeah, I, I had. Wally, oh, you got that is, paid for for me. My, huh? You got that paid for. Did I? Yeah. Um, I was the fucking best, wasn't I? I don't remember how much it was, but Norma wasn't paying me enough to pay. Uh, oh, it was probably a hundred and something. Half of it's ripped off, but it said the date on it is June twenty seventh, ninety five. 
Wow, you got your license after me. My restricted radio telephone operator permit. I got my mine radio 91. license. Ninety one. Nineteen eighty two. I have. Well, I don't know why I didn't. Oh, here's the other half of it. I don't know why and I didn't I remember have I remember. a license when I was on at Yes FM. Well, you might have had to get maybe get another one. Maybe you lost it. Maybe. I don't know. But I I remember when I got my license, you had to take a. I think it was ten questions. That was it. I didn't have to but, do that. Yeah, you know, you didn't. By then the time I did it, it, all I had to do was give them money, and they sent me a license. Yeah, I remember that when I got my license, the old timer said, what the fuck? You guys have it. So they had to take all kinds of fucking transmitter um, testing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a real test. And you went to a government building and you did like it was like an SAT mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because you had to do real, real shit. Like back in the day, my first um, transmitter readings, I used to have to open a fucking big old Gates transmitter with three big glass glowing tubes and read needle numbers, you know, the RF, the, the, this, the, that, I don't remember. It was three readings mm-hmm. and, stuff. and took those and you'd open that fucking door and your hair would stand up and would go. <laughs> and you couldn't close that door fast enough. Mm-hmm. That, was, oh, yeah. that was scary shit. Now I don't even think people take transmitter readings. I think it's all automated. Yeah, it, it's all automated in most places. But the, the last yeah, that, I had, you, I had to call the transmitter, and it would just go. I'm at Grant five seven seven two. It, you know, a computer voice giving you some numbers. I remember hearing that voice when we would go off the air, and the transmitter would call me in the middle of the night, and it uh, did not understand. Go fuck your mother. <laughs> no, this is this is the best call that you would get in the middle of the night. You would, you know, your phone would ring. Your phone would ring. No caller ID at this point. Your phone would ring. Hello? Enter. Right. (laughs) What? Enter. And if you didn't do it, it fucking hung up and called the next person. Yeah. Yeah, You're you're right. I remember, uh, not on our station, but when, when we were working at KISS, if the station went off the air, Nobody in the building, the whole fucking building would be full. And nobody would know that the, and this was not the FM. This was the AM. Mm-hmm. Nobody would know it went off the air. Mm-hmm. It could have been off for fucking days. Well, and I think we had, Jack like, listened we a, to it. Problem. <laughs> we had a silent sensor. Yeah, we didn't have one of AMs. Those. Well, we did, luckily. But you know what we also had? We also had a ground loop. So the silent sensor was hearing. Mm, mm, <laughs> so it was never a station, silent sensor. <laughs> station was off the air for four days, except for that hum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had, we had, um, we had uh, one of the stations. Well, we ended up putting in, and I think this was at at um, at Kiss. They put in a light that would go. If the if the warm station went off the air, it would start blinking over the because nobody listened to the fucking station. Mm-hmm. So in order to you know it was off the air, the silent sensor was hooked to a light bulb, a big bright light that would start fucking blinking in two different rooms in the building. Oh my god! Because uh, it just it, it is the apathy of the people you worked with. Because you'd be busting your ass to make the best thing you could make. And everybody else would be like, yeah, you guys suck. But also, you, you were a blood. lot busier on the air back then because you actually oh, had wow. to, like, play each song. You had to play the songs. You plan your breaks. You had to write the new. Like, you had you, to pull all the commercials write, for the hour and put away the ones from the previous hour and pull all the music for the hour. Write put, the news and yeah. do this and do that and fucking take phone calls and edit them down and mm-hmm. do all kinds. So, I will say that we cheated a lot on air. Um, we'd put most of our calls on air live yeah. without having a delay. Yeah. And it worked out. It was fine. Because when you have a decent station, you usually have decent listeners. Mm-hmm. And they're not calling up to say, oh, you guys fucking suck. Right. Wow, you fucking blow. <laughs> that was that was wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you shit. That was wow FM. That that was one of our that was one of my favorite liners of all time. We've listened to the competition, and wow, they, they suck. suck. 
<laughs> and I we got we got I remember Norma was like, I don't think yeah, well, you can't say suck. Suck is that's foul line. Can't put foul lines. Fuck that. We can put that on the air. George Carlin never said anything about suck. Yeah, suck is suck is okay. Mm-hmm. And 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 by the way, in case you didn't know, the GM sucks. Mm-hmm. For real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he really does. His friend, that's his husband. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, Uncle to- Uncle Bill. That's a husband. All right. <laughs> just, just, just so you know, she she was fucking clueless. That she didn't bra. know, huh? Norma didn't know. No way. She might have. She might have known later on, but no. I There's remember no Norma. I know. I she didn't know her son was a fucking cocaine addict. Well, I she. <laughs> I I know I've made fun of her like rationing toilet paper. She rationed printer paper. I had to use I had to use both sides of the printer paper to print my news out on every day because Jesus Christ. Because she didn't want to buy more paper. Even though like I guess nobody told her that fucks up the printer that would have cost her more to replace than the paper whatever. Um but do you remember, Wally? I think you were still, this was before you got fired. It was like the dead of winter. It was four degrees and some overnight part timer. Norma had put a lock on the thermostat and he decided oh. he wanted it warmer in there. And so he tried to Jimmy open her desk to get to the key to the lock on the thermostat. And he broke a a letter opener in the lock in her desk. And then he found another letter opener or a pen or something and jammed it into like behind the, the, the guard over the thermostat. It was one of those guards that had the little slots in the top. Yeah. And so he managed to push it all the way as hot as it could go. And then couldn't get it back. And then couldn't get it back and didn't say a word. And I had to come in. It was like a Saturday or something. Um, I had to come in and run whatever the fuck it was at 6 a.m. And because it was four degrees outside in Rome, New York, when I first came in, I was like, oh, it feels so nice in here. And then dude left. And all of a sudden I was like, is it? It's hot. It's hot in here. And I went and looked at the thermostat and it was like 110 degrees. And I'm trying to call Norma at 7 a.m. and she's not answering. And I'm leaving her, you know, voicemail messages like Norma, Norma, the guy broke the thermostat. It's 100 degrees in here. Your bill is your bill is rolling up right now. And it ended up. I think that was the same day that while she she came in, she can't get into her desk now because he has broken the lock with the letter opener. So she can't get to the key. So she's got to wait for a guy to come fix the desk and somebody to get into the thermostat. And then the microphone in the studio died. And I had to get the microphone from the production room across the hall and put a long mic cable. And so we were bringing up the production room in the on air board for the microphone, which was on the same pot as one of the CD players. And so you could only either talk or play a CD. <laughs> well, a, Jesus. I was there for that. I, I, I'm somewhat foggy on all of the stuff, but I do remember um, all those things having to happen, but listening to your story and listening today you going in and switching a mic and pulling cable from another room and, 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 and bringing up uh, the production room on this pot. They couldn't do that today. Nope. No one would want to do it today. I'm pretty they'd sure. Like, I'm, I'm, be, I'm it. guessing somebody told me to do that. I don't, I don't know that I would have. Oh, I would, I would that bet out. you knew how to do it. Maybe. Or but I bet you had figured out how to do it. Maybe. I just you remember think, that being one of my most stressful days ever on the air. <laughs> there, there is, there, there's absolutely a, a difference. It's like my friend at the, at the Hobby Lobby. Oh, I had to work three, five hour days in a row. I'm fucking exhausted. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't. This is crazy. It's fucking slave labor. I can't work this way. I need my private time. The, I, I just don't think there's there's the ability to fucking think on your uh, people think or want to think on their feet or want to go beyond. Hey, they're only paying me $19 an hour. 
I mean, you were fucking making what? Maybe nineteen dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> maybe four dollars an hour. Maybe. Yeah. You know what? Whatever you were, you were making whatever minimum wage was plus ten cents. That's probably what you were earning. Here's I don't know exactly what I was making, but I remember being super excited that at my next job I was going up to fifteen thousand dollars a year. Oh yeah. my god. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I was making less than fifteen there too. I was making like fourteen five or something. Or, I want to say I was probably making like ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pro- probably 10, maybe 12. Well, oh, you know what? I bet you were made. Now I'm it's coming back to me. I think you made eleven five or eleven two. And I think, yeah, because I think I was making twelve five because it was it was less than or it was the same I was making as my job back in the eighties when I was working in Virginia. And oh this God. was like this was like eight <laughs> years later. And this is why. I had to work a second job and got mugged delivering pizza. Fuck it. It's, it's also the same reason why we fucking had to do all those road shows and all that fucking bullshit. And she didn't want to even pay us for that. And I had to fight her fucking tooth and nail the people. And she only wanted to charge. They would charge the client. I think we made, I think we made a hundred bucks to do a road show, to do a, uh, a, um, which is more than most people make now doing fucking remotes. They're not making a hundred bucks now doing remotes. Lots of folks, you know, they're getting 75 bucks, 50 bucks to show up. I think we they're did also not doing the at FRE. Kind of I think we got a hundred bucks an hour for the remotes. At, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I think that's changed. I think, I think it's, I think it started to change because remotes used to sell for 1200, $1,500 for a remote radio has gotten so fucking weak and people are like, eh, $400. Or it's part of a fucking package. So there isn't there isn't a hundred dollars an hour there to be had. Mm. Not at all. I, I really think. Hey Chris, what's what what is um your station? Where where is the station you own? Um Annapolis, Maryland. So is that LMA or do you do you go visit it? Do you work? Do you- oh, I've been there a couple times, but yeah, it's LMA out to someone right now. Yeah. D- yeah. So do do you reap any profit out of it? Uh I will once we sell it. That, that, and that is the way radio goes, right? That is it. So, I mean, how do you how do you make a million dollars in radio? Start with two, right? Dollars, <laughs> million, two oh. stations, <laughs> <laughs> two stations, and two million, mm-hmm. and, you, and you get yeah, it's well, it didn't and it didn't used to be that way. So, is that an a, is it an AM or an FM or an AM? It's FM? it's an AM. And yep. it's, you running the oldies now. Uh huh. It's running the true oldies, Janet. So, so what Scott is the oldies Shannon. now? What are they running for? Is role is oldies now eighties? Um, it's fucking Prince. When, when I was doing it at the station, it was running, yeah, Prince and Madonna records and a bunch of disco. <laughs> but now, I mean, the 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 true oldies channels, you know, it's your normal fifty five to seventy two. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's your new, but so that being said, there's money to be had there if you fucking, you know, if you can find it. If if they well, really run real oldies on real it, FM stations that can people can actually hear. If they w- wanted to, but Madison Avenue doesn't understand that. Hmm. And you know, you look at the people that are sitting there listening to fucking, oh, I don't know, Dion. You know, you're listening to a teenager in love. That person's my father. My father's 83. Yeah. Okay, and my dad at, at his current age is just waiting for the finish line. Okay, yeah, but, but he isn't going out spending any money. Oh, that's bullshit! Now, that's no, bullshit. he's not. He he's bought not. a fucking freezer two weeks ago. That, that's it. That's exactly. <laughs> and hauled it on his fucking back. And didn't he buy a car recently? He's in the process. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's he's still he's where the money gonna... is. He's he's still buying. She's buying cars. He, it's it, he is the fucking. 42 year old female with a fucking couple of kids. He's buying you, furniture, he's buying appliances, and he's buying cars. That's yeah, a fucking target demo, motherfucker. Get some of those Roman dick pills, too. Yeah. Always at it. You know? so, <laughs> and to, to not advertise and to not fucking look at those, there's the fucking problem because I think people who have those stations, a lot of them use them as, oh, it's a throwaway. It's a yeah. value add. It's a exactly. value add in a six station cluster. It's a value add. Oh, we'll throw you on this station for free. Exactly. Fuck that. Yeah. Those Unless it's an area where high school football is big. Yeah. 
They're they're buying shit though. Those motherfuckers are buying shit mm -hmm. because they're only they're the only fuckers who can afford houses. Because they, they've they've got they've got their fucking old po old folk money. You know, they they've got their career worth of money in the fucking bank. They can buy they can afford all that shit. Yeah, this is uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting in a place where I shouldn't go. That's it, that's all right. It pisses me off that that they they look at they look at the the radio, but they also look at that fucking demographic. What did you call it? Fifty five to seventy two. Uh, well, no, and when I was saying fifty five to seventy two, I meant nineteen fifty five to nineteen seventy two music. That's the music. Oh, I meant fifty five years old. True, no, 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 no. True oldies. Oh yeah. And I, and I like that. Listen, I think you know what they had to they had to change because I think people in our generation got mad when they found out that the music we grew up on was being called oldies now. Right. So they so now it's classic hits. That's classic hits. Oldies right. is the stuff from the fifties and the sixties. Classic hits is the stuff from the eighties. Yeah, and the and the, the true oldies channel. I mean, somebody described it to me as Bill Haley. Rock around the clock through Daniel from Melton John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's basically what the format is. And I tell you what, I would still listen to that. Yeah, I'd, I'd listen to it listen as well. It. Yeah, I, mean, I, I I listen to all kinds of shit, but I would still absolutely listen to that. I, I I'm less on the um the Bill Haley stuff and the Big Boppa stuff and the well, I mean that's the shit from my dad being in high school. Depending on the artist, though, you know? like I will listen to you know. Um, so, some of the stuff from from that, but I find some of that stuff like uh, Bill Haley sort of, yeah, mm. I, I don't like it as much. I want to yeah. listen to you know Lenny and the Squig Tones. That's what you need. I, <laughs> I was with my grandson. I I told you we we, we did that thing uh, that football thing a couple weekends ago. Why I couldn't be here uh, on Sunday? And we did the show later, and on our way home, I'm listening to some NPR bullshit. And he said, hey, Papa, "Fucking leftist." Go Papa, ahead. Do you, ha do you have your um? Do you have your iPod with you? And I said, "No, it's not in this car yet." And he said, "Oh, I'd, I'd really like to hear like some Harry Chapin or some Jim Croce." Wow. What me if I didn't get on? And and I I had the Alexa. There. Alexa, boom boom. We're listening to Jim Croce. We're listening to fucking uh. 30,000 he loves he loves that song 30,000 pounds of bananas and uh <laughs> from Jim from uh Harry Chapin and bad bad Leroy Brown and 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 don't mess around with Jim and he likes that shit and uh American Pie he fucking sings American Pie at the top of his like 16 That's and he knows great. these songs fucking it is great you guys mm -hmm. it's fucking awesome mm -hmm. i think i probably already told this story because i think my memory is as old as the songs yeah because it, i asked which uh which jim croce song he liked and, oh okay yeah so i forget so, and i said so, that like, bad bad leroy least, brown was the one i loved when i was a kid because i could legally say damn right yes yeah, and, and the other one I like is uh yeah, but I remember I was in third grade, I think, when that song was huge. And I remember there was a uh in, in Wista, Massachusetts, and we had a um a uh talent show and a kid sang Bad Bad Leroy Brown and said, Damn, and everybody oh! <laughs> <laughs> in the third grade and being, Oh my god, unbelievable scandalous. And there were um, you know, there were other songs when I was a kid. You remember um Candy, uh, Candyman, Sammy Davis Jr. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That was that was a band song when I was a kid. Why? Yeah, one of the I used to listen to W O R C and W T A G, and T A G was a Worcester Telegram Gazette owned radio station. W R C and Worcester, and they banned those. Uh, one of those stations banned that song, so we would listen to the other station so we could hear Candyman. We didn't know what the fuck it was about. But apparently, can make a or something. Yeah. You guys, uh, hang on one second. Sprinkle it with you. Can I call you right back? Okay. Bye. Well, at least you didn't have to go pee. No, my, the, that was my mom. She's in the hospital. Oh, dear. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's okay. She's all right. She uh -huh. keeps falling and fracturing her vertebrae. Well, tell her to fucking stop. Jesus Christ. I did. When I called her the other day, when she was back in the hospital, I said, I just feel like at this point you're enjoying your time there because you keep going back. You think she's got back. Munchausen's vertebrae? I don't, I don't know. But <laughs> It's Munchausen's vertebrae. <laughs> Is she falling because she's got like some sort of equilibrium issue or she's just 
doesn't pay attention. You don't know. Uh, I think because uh, probably 50, she's 71. Uh, um, at some point she, she just, she stopped like getting up out of the recliner and doing stuff. And I think her body is just sort of declining. Weakening. Yeah. Weakening. Yeah. 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 There you go. Same, same story at my, my parents' house, you know? Yep. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you your dad throws a freezer on his back, on his 82-year-old back. Uh-huh. And holds it inside the house. That. How oh, pissed you were you, loved Chris? It. Oh, how pissed like, were you? Stop it, Dad. Jesus Christ, stop. That's how pissed <laughs> off I was. Yeah, I, I think, because I think I told you guys last time, I have a hard time now with a 50-pound bag of grain. I don't understand how he fucking towed it around or thought he could tow it around a fucking freezer, though he did put it in his car, right? He did. Got it in the van. God damn. Yep. And see, but he, but your dad is, he, he's part of that dying breed of, of, of men, right? He, he's a, he I is. can do it. I can do it. Nothing's going to stop me. The, the, it, that is a, that's a mentality. That's just a mentality of, uh, of uh, men from the forties who uh, just believe that nothing could stop them. They could accomplish that's, anything. That's it. It's, it's a mentality that, that is dying. Like I said, three days of five hours. It's killing me. <laughs> I'm 82. Put that fucking freezer on my back. I'm getting it done. I mean, that's, I think that's fucking awesome to tell you the truth. I, I, I'm sure you didn't think it was awesome, but I think it's fucking, you I know. Mean, it's awesome because he didn't kill himself doing it. So yeah, the, man, absolutely. the man's still alive. Everything's fine. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's still part of that. He's still got that sort of thing that that anything is possible. I can do it. Anything's possible. And the other folks are running around saying, I can be anything I want to be. No, no, you fucking can't because you don't have the drive. You don't have the same fucking, fucking desire that that 82-year-old guy has. That's what you don't have. I admire your dad there. Well, I, I try to. Huh? I said I try to. Well, yeah, but... But, but this is the same guy you have to tell to make sure he takes a shower, right? Um, like I said, every two <laughs> days you don't shower or you're going to the home. <laughs> All right. On that note, I got to go take a crap, guys. Yeah, I, wanna, we, I got bread in the oven. I'm going to go get the well, bread. Do we have a dad joke to, to see us out? Uh, no, I don't have anything today. I'm not feeling the best. So I'll, I'll give you two next week. You okay. sound, oh, two next week. Okay, wow. we're going to hold you to that. All right, we'll do something. (laughs) eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply.